Hi. Welcome back, people. Am I on live now? I'm not too sure how this thing works. But okay. Great. Okay, hi everybody. Um, this is just a very random live video. Um, I didn't really have an intention to start the live video, but um, since some of the, there were some recent developments and I didn't really have the time to try to conceptualize and script something out, so I'm just gonna go off the cuff and to discuss some of the different developments that I saw at least on the internet. And more importantly, um, some people actually tweeted uh, me and, and DM'd me about some of the developments thus far. So um, yeah, I will talk about um, the two specific events. Um, firstly, will be about the share buyback. And secondly, would be about the regulators or, or the news regarding audit disclosures. So if you guys have any questions, um, please feel free to leave in the comments first. Um, I'll be addressing them later on. Um, I'll talk about the share buyback first and then talk about the audit. Then we can talk about um, the rest of the things. And yeah, um, hope you guys had a great day. And please remember to smash this freaking like button because I mean, it helps push the algorithm for my stuff. Yeah, so okay, let's get right into it. So firstly, I think today in the morning, um, for whoever that is in Singapore or if in the United States, back in the, the evening of yesterday, um, Alibaba actually announced an additional share buyback from their $15 billion program. Um, they bumped it up to the $25 billion, so it's an additional $10 billion. So I think um, rather than looking at it at face value, because if to look at Alibaba's price right now, um, even though that I'm not really concerned with the price, because as you guys know, um, I suck at timing the market and um, my timing has always been off. I have just been averaging down and some time back, I've actually stopped buying essentially because I don't really have additional capital to keep plowing into this investment. But yeah, you can see that in today's um, share price movement, it's up around 13%. And the current market cap is around $315 billion as the live, as of this live um, video itself. So a 13% increase on a $300 billion market cap, that's an additional give or take. How, how much would that be? I'm not too sure, but um, yeah, we will do the calculations. Yeah, that's an additional 30 to $40 billion in the ballpark range. So if you look at it from that perspective, um, they increased or they bumped up their share buybacks by $10 billion and then the market cap got pushed up by $30 billion. So, so that's, in, that's an interesting phenomenon, right? So um, um, it, it technically shouldn't be that way. And more importantly, um, if you have to really look at the details of the share buyback, um, it's not... Um, immediately done. They actually have a time frame of around two years for the entire share buyback program to be uh, um, to, to materialize essentially. And more importantly, as you guys keep driving up the entire share price itself, it's not good for the company if they're buying back shares at a higher price um, compared to the $70, $80 um, that Alibaba was at um, like one, one week ago. So if you were to look at it from this perspective, I think um, the more important thing that we should focus on would probably be what um, the, the new CFO or the deputy CFO um, said. So, and I quote, the upside share buyback underscores our confidence in Alibaba's long-term sustainable growth potential and value creation. So Alibaba's stock price does not fairly reflect the company's value given our robust financial health and expansion plans. So internet giants will start to refocus on their main businesses in the future. So as a result, it's not necessary for companies like Alibaba to keep such a huge amount of cash on their books. So I think this has been a lot of um, sentiments that uh, uh, that has been big, that has been echoed by a lot of investors. They were saying that, hey, why are you keeping $50, $60 billion cash on your balance sheet? It's, it doesn't make sense. Um, it's not like you're going to acquire another Sun Art or you're going to acquire um, somebody else in the entire space. So, so I think a lot of um, investors' concerns and investors' sentiments has been heard and they wanted to really listen and, and try to give out or distribute back um, some of the wealth or some of the profits back to shareholders. So one thing I wanted to note as well, um, the $15 billion bump to $25 billion, it's an additional $10 billion, but it doesn't mean that they still have $25 billion to, 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 to materialize. 
in essence, if you have to look at the last quarter's earnings results, um, they actually, if you just control F, um, you can just control F repurchases. You can see that they actually bought back around 51% um, of their $15 billion commitment. So likewise, if you were to add, it's just 50% um, of um, $15 billion, which is $7.5 billion, and then you plus an additional $10 billion. So essentially, um, they have around $17.5 billion left um, to, to, to do their share repurchasing program. So that's the part. Um, it doesn't mean that they are going to buy back $25 billion worth of shares. So um, this run up, this market run up, whether is it um, um, justifiable or not, I think that I'll leave it up to you to decide. So on the second more important news, I think people were also very excited about this new developments. I think uh, they were saying that, hey, um, actually Chinese regulators are actually asking some of the US listed firms to prepare for additional audit disclosure. So I think um, um, they're, they're just, just going to read off the first paragraph. So Chinese regulators have actually asked some of the country's US listed firms, um, including Alibaba, Baidu and Jingdong, to prepare for more audit disclosures as Beijing steps up their efforts to ensure domestic companies remain listed in New York. So I think one of the main um, um, tricky and more sensitive topics that we have is really the HEFCA, which is the Horan Foreign Accountables Act. So, so this, this entire issue, right, um, how would I put it? If, if, if you may indulge me in, in, in sharing my own opinion, of course, a lot of you here just, just wants to listen to me talk about it. Uh, to, to me, um, this entire, how, how the entire issue that was transpired thus far, it feels like a political weapon, even though I, I know that um, the stock market or the capitals market should not be politicized. But um, whenever there are the, the in whenever um, um, new developments around this thing happens again, it's usually at insensitive, very sensitive times. And, and it makes me, as a shareholder or, or someone from a third party's point of view, I can't help but to think that it's a political weapon. So, so China, on, the, on one hand, has been constantly saying and con has been constantly reiterating the fact and their position that, hey, um, we are willing to work together. We are willing to um, disclose, but, but you, have to, you, you have to give and take. So, so in, in essence, there, there has to be some, some sort of negotiation. But um, essentially, um, it feels like the US is, is, has the upper hand in this entire um, um, delisting concern today. So even though um, there has been, there, there, there might be more and more um, articles or more and more headlines talking about, hey, um, Beijing or, or China is stepping up their efforts. Um, if the US don't wish to cooperate, um, um, all your Chinese companies are going to be delisted sooner or later. I think that's a fact because um, um, you have to understand in this power dynamics currently, um, I, I'm not too sure whether Wall Street still have that amount of influence um, on whether they, because um, ultimately you have to understand, um, although both both parties, which is the US and China, has, has to benefit in this um, um, idea of listing in the United States or in the um, New York Stock Exchange or wherever, um, you need to know who benefits more in this transaction or in this entire um, um, relationship. And it feels like China has more to gain from this and, and it feels like um, the US doesn't seem desperate about it as well. So... Um, even though there, there, there might be quote unquote good developments, better better understanding, um, better um, negotiations behind the table, um, everything is still up in the air. And I, I would fundamentally believe that um, it will be a hot button issue moving forward and there'll be more discussions surrounding it as well. So don't expect this delisting and, and this entire US-China tension to go away so easily. And quick plug, um, for those of you who haven't watched Ray Dalio's Changing World Order um, video on YouTube, please go ahead and do so. Um, I think he, he do brought up some um, pretty interesting um, insights and how he actually plot some of the data and um, studied the history of all these different civilizations and empires. And I think it, it allows you to glean uh, some sort of insights from how um, um, a lot of people are looking at things now and why this US-China tension will probably not come to an easy conclusion anytime soon. So yeah. I think um, that is also why I wanted to come up with this um, quick live stream. Um, a lot of people saying, hey, Alibaba to the moon, um, let's go. We have, um, it's, it's at the bottom, the boat is leaving. Or, or hey, um, um, you, you lost the opportunity to, to buy into Alibaba at $70, $80. Um, I, I would personally disagree. I think a lot of the risks that we are experiencing as an entire market thus far, it's still on, uh, we, are, we, are, we are on a heightened posture. There is still... Um, um, the probability of a recession, um, of stagflation, of, of the war not coming to an end anytime soon, um, um, some, some 
COVID disruption, um, um, pandemics, supply chain disruption, and et cetera, et cetera. The list goes on. But I also understand that, hey, um, the stock market always climbs on the wall of worry. So in this case, likewise, I, I, I did say that, hey, um, I, don't, I, I don't try to time the market and I buy into a comfortable position. Um, I, I look into a company. I like the fundamentals. I think that some of the, the, the decisions and some of the commotions might be overblown. I do my own valuation. I like the valuation and then I buy into the company. So, so that's, that's my, my game plan. And of course, I know that um, there has been more and more people on the online space saying that um, a recession might come. Um, the stock market might be extremely volatile and, and some people might transit the strategy, um, start going to bonds, um, start trying to hatch your portfolio. Um, that's exactly the opposite that I'm doing because I know that um, I, I'm fortunate enough to know that I'm, I'm, in, I'm in a privileged position because I'm still in the accumulating phase. And if you cannot tell already, I'm still quite young. So um, I, I do probably have income coming in. I'll continue dollar cost averaging. But I think um, the baseline now thus far would be I'm a lot more patient in terms of timing my buying ins. And, and for those of you who don't want to um, continue read up on co continue reading up with all the financial markets, financial news, etc. Um, please continue on with your DCA, your dollar cost averaging strategy. You do it um, once a month, once a quarter, once a year. Do whatever you like. Um, um, it's totally up to your preference. But I'll just like to caution everyone. Um, I don't think everything is, 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 is nice and dandy. I don't think we are over the worst yet. Um, that being said, I think we should still stick to our investment strategy. And uh, more importantly, I think you should spend more time worrying about the fundamentals of the company and how some of the discussions or commotions or world news, um, it's going to affect uh, uh, profits, revenues, margins, etc. Um, rather than uh, being, being extremely worried about um, everything under the sun. I think, I think that's a little bit counterproductive, especially when um, your time is limited and you can spend your time doing better things like watching my video and smashing the like button. I don't know why you guys are still not smashing the like button. You guys, there's like 170 of you right now and like I only have 30 likes. I have no clue why. So please remember to smash the like button. Okay? So okay, um, right now, if you have to look at it, um, I've covered the two pieces of news, um, which are the new developments, if I may put it. So uh, you can we, we can talk about it and, and I can take some questions in and I'll see. Hmm. Okay, great. So Humble Chartis, I think most of you actually know him. Um, Humble Chartis has been one of the loyal viewers here. And he has been providing a lot of like TA analysis and stuff like that. So Baba Bullish, after breaking through 108, 110 with good volume, but would it be sustainable? I think your guess would be as good as mine. Um, I'm not a TA expert. Of course, um, I know how to draw some lines here and there, like my primary school drawing. But um, I have been quite bad in market timing, especially when, um, if you were to think about it, the entire channel is on Alibaba. I've been making videos for like, what, one year? And we are in a bear market, in a broader bull market. So it's it's quite insane, um, the, 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 the ability for me to pick stocks. But of course, I love it when people are running away. I think it, it provides you some sort of interesting opportunity if you are to think of it from that point of view. Contrarian or not, um, stupidity or not, or, or, or you're, you're just crazy, um, I'm supporting China, whatever you guys like to say, um, please carry on with the narrative and stuff like that. But yeah, um, that's that's how it is. So um, Baba is mooning. Um, let's have set, let's have celeb, let's have a celebratory party stream. Um, I don't think Alibaba is mooning if you're to look at it. <laughs> Alibaba's peak was at $300. Um, we are at currently 110. That's not even 50% off its peak. I think we're still 60 odd percent down. Um, maybe we can have a celebratory live stream when Alibaba actually reaches back to its all time high. But I think um, the climb back up would be rather slow because there are a lot of challenges, definitely. I'm not going to downplay the different challenges that we have. So um, um, those are uh, some of the reasons. I think uh, if you haven't catch it already, um, I have a summary video for Alibaba what has been happening and what we know thus far, please feel free to um, watch that first to really understand uh, my synthesis of everything that's been transpired. Yeah, so um, let's look. So it's still at broken prices, broken down prices and going up because of market sentiments. It feels like in a relief buying. I don't know if I trust it. I think, I think likewise, uh, I... I wouldn't really say that it's a relief buying or whether is it a relief rally. Um, it's true that there might be some adjustments, micro adjustments in terms of market sentiments. Um, I don't think that it's a broad-based um, um, 
uh, uh, broad market sentiment change to China because if it is uh, uh, essentially all Chinese stocks or the entire basket would be rallying quite crazily because um, funds and institutions will be buying in. I think right now uh, people are just nibbling at it and, and people are just um, following and playing with some of the price patterns and price charts to be very honest. Um, they're just trying to recover some of the baseline prices and, and to set support prices. Uh, this is just my own speculation, of course. Um, please don't, please don't, please don't take it as financial advice. I, I clearly don't know what I'm talking about. Hi, Sing. Yes, my face is getting rounder and rounder. It's it's a it's a it's a bad habit. Oh my god, I think I need to start exercising soon. I mean, I am exercising, but I need to ramp up my intensity um soon. Yep. Um. Yes, um, like, likewise what Ginny said, please give a like and um, if you haven't subscribed already, I'm not too sure why are you not subscribed yet. Um, oh yeah, based on subscription, I want to thank you guys again. I'm not too sure why um, there's 10,000 people, but yeah, this channel has like 10.5 thousand subscribers. I want to thank all of you that's been on this journey thus far. I know um, um, there is a good split between people that um, really just wants to listen to my opinion. There is also another group of people that um, constantly come over and pound people in the comment section and stuff like that. Um, that's how the internet works. I'm not going to try to censor people or, or try to cancel people because I believe that um, everyone should have a voice. But if you start hurling vulgarities or if you're being disrespectful, then I, I would I would probably delete a, a comment or two. And if you're getting too um, aggressive, I'll probably ban you from commenting as well. So that's just um, my own take on it. If not, um, let's continue on. So um great seems like um, a lot of you are happy with with the price movement I, I, you see this this is this is something that 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 i'm slightly uncomfortable with when when you're happy when the stock price is up it means that uh, the converse would probably be true uh means that when when the stock price is down or when when alibaba is crashing to 70 dollars you'll be affected or you'll be unhappy about it and i i try not to tie my feelings or tie how, how my, my emotions with, with the stock price, you see. I don't want to feel like um, if Alibaba suddenly goes up like 30%, then I feel like I, I, I gain 30 IQ points. And when Alibaba goes down by 30%, I lose 30 IQ points. It's, it's a very bad feeling and a very bad position to be in in the first place. And, and given the current standing and, and my current position and portfolio, um, it seems like I am probably like at 50 IQ points, assuming that I have average IQ. Because I at its peak, I, I was down around 50%. So um, um, just know that everyone is a random guy on the internet. And even though I know that some of you have investing as a passion and um, you guys build your portfolio from the ground up, you put in a lot of effort, you have a lot of research, a lot of conviction. I think it's still a good rule of thumb to try to um, separate yourself, separate your emotions from your portfolio and try our best to not just not look at it. And I think... I. I <laughs> I think the other time, I, I did check once um, when it was crashing down. I think it was at 80 plus. After 80 plus, I didn't bother checking. I did tell myself it was an interesting conversation with myself. I think on my bed, I was saying, oh, if Alibaba actually drops um, to 50 bucks, I might actually break my rule because I, I did release a previous video saying that I stopped buying Alibaba since last year. So if it drops to 50, I might have actually entered more, um, even though it might not be a very good um, quote unquote um, decision from a portfolio point of view, but who cares, man? I mean, um, we are we are in it to 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 to, to have to, to to have returns and to just um, um suit your own try try to suit your own risk profile and, and do your own investments. Nobody's here to tell you what's right, what's wrong. So yeah, that's about it. So next question, um, where is the stock price heading to? Question two, when would the short squeeze usually happen? I think um, for number one, I think nobody knows. If you want, I think the humble charties actually provide some video and, and based on some technical analysis. But I think based on my own conservative, conservative assumption, Alibaba is probably worth at least 150 to 200. That's based on conservative estimates. And I did a DCF video before. I think a more um, fairer price to actually put onto um, Alibaba, inclusive of the China discount, is probably around at least 220 and above. So, so that's that's my normal fair value for, for Alibaba. So, so that's that. But of course, the market disagrees with me um, for at least a year now. So uh, please don't listen to whatever I have to say. So number two, when does short squeeze usually happen? Um, when Wall Street bets unite and when people or retail investors decided to go against hedge funds. I mean... Technically speaking, um, you have to have opposing forces, right? You have to have um, one side that's shorting heavily 
and there's a lot of short interest and then the other side just diamond handling and just mooning so that, that's how short squeezes happen but um, I don't think particularly uh, uh, I, I do have personal um, insights where I have friends um, playing on margins or I even have, have people in the discord chat that actually sold out at 80 plus it wasn't at rock bottom but at 80 plus and a lot of people liquidating their positions so rather than saying that um, the, the, the stock really gathered a lot of short interest, I think it was also because some was margin called. Um, some people essentially just started liquidating their position because they couldn't take it anymore. So I think it's an accumulation and a culmination of all the different factors. So that's, that's, that's how it works. So hi, everyone. Um, I see a lot of highs here. Yes. Um... So interesting question, JC. So he was asking, <coughs> at what price do I think of trimming a part of your Alibaba position? And at what valu valuation do you think that it's overpriced? Thanks. Sorry, give me a moment. All right. So um, that's an interesting question. I think we're still quite far from um, my own perspective on how how I think that, or, or at what valuation do I think that Alibaba is overvalued? Uh, it, it, currently, my, my, my baseline, like I said, um, my baseline conservative projection is 150 to 200. That's the baseline baseline. Um, that's like assuming Alibaba grows like what, 5% or something. But anyway, um, the fair value is really a very big range. So the fair value actually ranges from around 220 to around 280. So in order for it to be overvalued, um, it's a gray area and it's something that we have to tread extremely carefully, especially as um, and investors and, and retail investors, which don't have like research teams or we don't have um, um, greater insights and, and people supporting us or something like that. But, but that being said, um, if you were to ask me, hey, is $300 um, overvalued? I would probably not think so. $320, then, then you start ramping the numbers up $10 in, in $10 increment, $320, $330, $340. Um, I can't really tell you because I think that, that, that there are many factors to consider. Number one, the strength of the market. Number two, the conditions of, of the market itself. Number three, you have to find opportunities elsewhere. So in order for me to liquidate, um, number one, um, the fundamentals have to still be strong, fundamentally strong. Um, if it's still fundamentally strong and I think that the valuation is okay, then I will probably continue holding on unless I find a better opportunity elsewhere that um, fits my own bill of what kind of returns I'm looking at and um, the risk that I'm willing to take over. So um, there are a multitude of factors that you have to consider. Um, but off the top of my head, if you're just going to ask for a, a baseline price on what I'm going to sell, if Alibaba shoots up to like, what, $400, $500 today, I'm, I'm probably going to sell it. But if not, um, I don't think if it's at 300 300-ish, I'm probably not going to let go. Um, because... You see, the, the, the funny thing is a lot of people like to say that we are long-term investors, but then um, within that one year, I don't know how many people um, came in and out of Alibaba how many times. So uh, it's, it's a very difficult question to answer, but um, yeah, there, there has to be a few, the stars have to align in order for me to, 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 to look into something else. And, and that being said, um, especially for people with active income, right? Uh, for some of you who might know, I actually started a small position in Facebook and I'm actually presuming that it drops another 50%. So if Facebook goes to $100, I would have probably built my full position in Facebook. So I think the lowest Facebook went was around 180 to 190. I was monitoring the stock price a little. I was ready to fire my second tranche um, and at around 1, 175, if I'm not wrong. And, and the price didn't come. So then Facebook now recovered back to 216, which is around my cost price. Um, do I regret it? Not really. Um, I mean, as investors, we know our own uh, margin of safety. We know um, price points that we are comfortable with. We know um, the position that we are comfortable with. So um, please work with and, and, and fit Fix, fix a strategy down, especially when um, the markets are not moving. Um, I think weekends are a good time to wind down and to relook into your strategy and to relook into what you have been doing over the past week. So um, that's when your emotions are not, are not affecting your decisions because ultimately you don't want to make a decision when you are emotionally affected and you are not in the right place emotionally. So that's a very bad um, 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 position to be in or situation to be in. So yeah, I hope it answers. Um, would you cover some other Chinese stocks? I actually do like to cover Tencent. I think Tencent is a very interesting business. Um, generally speaking, I do have some Chinese exposure via KWeb. Um, 
KWEB is an ETF with all the different Chinese stocks. So um, I actually do 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 quite a few. Um, um, I think in the olden days, when, when the channel just started, I think one or two months in, I was still talking about JD and Pintoto. But it seems like nobody's interested in JD and Pintoto and only my Alibaba video blew up. So I'm, I'm still definitely continuously monitoring all their competitors because how, how do you truly understand a company if you don't monitor the landscape and you don't monitor the competition? But if you guys are interested, I think, um, um, you see, you, 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 uh, Marcus, if, if I pronounce it correctly, Marcus, you, you named Xpeng, right? So a lot of people are interested in Xpeng and Neo, right? Because of the EV craze. Uh, I, I will personally understand and, and know myself that I'm no, I'm no EV expert and I have a lot of due diligence that has to be done in order for me to actually make a knowledgeable and, and, and to opine on something like that. I don't want to be irresponsible and just um, just keep shouting for new because new is the hot thing. So I think that's my minimum level of due diligence and responsibility I have as a creator on this platform. So that's about it. Um, Right, I want to focus on this. Dude, we got these big jumps all the time in Baba. Yes, um, like I said, I think on my Twitter, I did tweet it out. Um, Chinese stocks are recently trading like cryptocurrencies. So I'm waiting for my Alibaba coin or Alibaba NFT if um, they, they actually do release a version of um, the Baba coin. Now, I have Baba in IRA, Roth, and individual account. I converted some to Hong Kong through Swap. Child swap, I believe, and I start starting to think it would not really make a difference. Thoughts? Um, I I personally am invested in both exchanges as well in the US and Hong Kong. Um, I didn't convert any because I didn't see a need to. Because if in any case, if they really were to delist, um, I would have just sell out my US equities position and just buy in Hong Kong. Um, it's true that a bulk of my positions are in Hong Kong. Um, I do buy in the, 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 the US exchange, like the BABA ticker symbol, because it's easier for me to dollar cost average because it's at $100 slot. Um, for those of you who don't know, in the Hong Kong exchange, um, they go in quantities of 100. So 100 998 shares, that's equivalent to around one, 1. 1.5 to 2,000 Sing dollar per lot. And, and that's, that's quite a big amount, um, especially that I, I don't have an income of like 20 grand a month. And, and yeah, I, I just slowly dollar cost average. Um, that's just purely um, the basis on why I'm buying BABA. If not, um, if I'm entering big positions or big tranches, um, I usually just buy on the Hong Kong exchange. To me, I, I don't really see a difference. Um, of course, you can say that, oh, if the listing, what would happen? I think both will be severely impacted because of the short-term price movements and the pressure on the stock. Um, but if if they're, they're, they're supposed to model after each other's movement, so there shouldn't be uh, much of a difference. So yeah, hi everyone. Um, seems like uh, great. Yes, guys, please smash the like button. Um, please smash the subscribe as well while you are at it. Um, it's red color in, in case you did you, you don't know how, how it looks like. So yeah, next. All right. Judy mentioned a very, very, very great point. So if you were to allow me um, to indulge myself again, because um, I, I was keeping track on a list of notes and I was typing it on my notes pad um, throughout the entire week. So um, we talk about a little bit about the Baba um, retrenchment. So so this, okay, be, before we talk about the Baba retrenchment, maybe I will list down a, a list of things that I've written down um, that might remotely or, or directly impact um, the business itself. So firstly, I think um, a lot of you know Kevin O'Leary, which is um, one of Mr. Wonderful and Shark Tank. He recently bought Alibaba and he was saying that, hey, um, Chinese stocks are quite dirt cheap. So that's the first part. And then on the second part, um, there was this news article from, I don't know, some random media. It's not by Bloomberg or something. They were saying that there was a possible breakup of Tencent as a business. So as you guys know, um, Tencent is a huge tech conglomerate. They have their investment arm, um, they have their WeChat, they have um, their gaming arm, they have many different um, softwares that they have and a lot of the companies that they own. So there was this speculation that, hey, um, the Chinese government is got, not going to end this anytime soon and they're going to break up Tencent. And after Tencent is broken up, naturally speaking, um, anyone that can think would think that Alibaba is going to be broken up as well. But until now, it's all speculation. Uh, personally, even if I think that um, the end game for Tencent is to be broken up, I don't think that the time is now. I don't think we're even close to it. Uh, if I put my head out there, I think by 2025, they are still not broken up because um, there is still a lot of growth um, um, to be reaped and they need Tencent's capabilities and they need um, Tencent to be intact as a tech conglomerate. So, so that's my own view. Of course, I don't know anything. 
Then next part, I think um, some of you who have been following China, you know that um, some of the major cities, including Shenzhen, has been undergoing lockdowns again because of some of the pandemic that's spreading like wildfire. Um, but I think the latest news thus far is they actually reopened some of these major cities, but um, control measures are going, being put in place. Um, so, so that's um, thankfully so. And, and I think um, this, this entire uh, zero, zero COVID strategy, um, um, I think we are up for debate on whether it's a good strategy or not. But um, yeah, it, it's another video altogether. But um, that's, that's what it is today. So, so that's how the Chinese government is experiencing or that's how they are um, handling the entire situation over there. So I think recently the China retail sales um, targets was also quite decent. I think it actually beat um, expectations, which was um, um, quite surprising to be very honest. Um, next up, we also have Credit Suisse that actually um, um, discussed, they, they, they started overweighting China equities again. So maybe after JP Morgan um, downgraded Alibaba, and uh, it's basically only one analyst that say that but he downgraded Alibaba's price target to 65. And then now I think Credit Suisse took the opposite position and said that, hey, uh, maybe China, China equities is worth a consideration. Um, then, yeah, then, then we have the new developments of um, um, Alibaba announcing share buybacks and the audit requirements. So now back to this opinion on Baba retrenchment, right? Um, recently, there was this article, I've forgotten where as well. Um, I've been reading too much um, things, but yeah. There was this article saying that a lot of all these tech conglomerates, not only Alibaba, by the way, Alibaba, Tencent, all your big tech, uh, Meituan, they've been retrenching a lot of um, um, employees. I think around 10 to 15% of the employees that was cut. And 10 to 15% is actually a sizable amount. But um, from my understanding, I think I had a discussion with another friend as well um, regarding this um, particular retrenchment. Um, there, there has been news and articles talking about um, them trying to be a lot more efficient and be a lot more disciplined in terms of capital. So we also understand some of these tech conglomerates. Whenever you get big, um, you get a little bit complacent. You start throwing money here and there. Hey, um, you have one million here, you have one million there. Go ahead, go and try to um, expound on some of these business ideas and more radical um, um, and more innovative ideas, if I may put it that way. So um, in, in that instance, um, there, there are a lot of like profit, uh, or sorry, um, uh, there are a lot of all these loss-making industries and segments that they've been um, trying to um, innovate and try to cultivate. So in this case, um, I, I, I do hear some, some rumors um, saying that a lot of all this retrenchment, they're just essentially cutting some of the people in, in some of these um, um, segments of the business or verticals of the business to, to make them more lean and to make them uh, more efficient in terms of capital allocation and in terms of um, headcount. So um, cutting employees at this climate, um, I don't think it's necessarily the best time to do it, especially when the economy is um, not, not experiencing the, it, it's not in the best times thus far. And um, for those of you who know, um, China's GDP estimate for 2022, it's 5.5%. Um, and like the headlines like to put it, it's the slowest in 30 years. And of course, we can't expect um, China or even all the larger developing economies like India um, to grow exponentially, right? To continue growing, growing, growing. Um, there is a stage where you start maturing and there is a stage where you start slowing down. It's, it's quite ironic or it's quite funny when people are saying that 5.5% GDP growth rate is quite slow. Um, I, I don't know, but I think it's still pretty decent um, considering that um, China is still a pretty large country and um, the GDP is probably going to overtake the US soon. Um, but that being said, on a per capita basis, there's still a lot of room to improve and a lot of um, improvement to catch up. So in this case, I think for Baba's retrenchment, um, I think to, to me, I take a more neutral stance. Um, it's a good thing because um, if you're to look at it from capital management perspective, it's good because um, you try to cut off some of the date weights. I'm not saying that they're date weights, of course, but um, be more efficient in terms of your allocation and management. But a bad thing would be, I'm not too sure what would the pressure be um, from the country's point of view or from the perspective of the government, especially when um, there is some turmoil and some challenges that's going to come in the upcoming times. So that's 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 my opinion thus far. So I hope I hope it helps and and if if what right um, some personal question when and where are you going for your intern or graduate program I'm not under any graduate program I'm still an undergraduate and I haven't um, finished my university a lot of the discussions on my like, interns where am I going um, um stuff like that I still have a long runway so I'll, I'll I'll see where where things bring me to so yeah um. Right, um, you didn't buy in the 70s. Yes, I didn't buy in the 70s. Um, I did release the video um, earlier on. I said why I stopped um, buying Alibaba. Um, all my rationale and explanation was there. But uh, 
I also wouldn't want to say it too early that we have bottomed at 70. Who knows? Alibaba might reach 50. I think all of us should just do everything they are comfortable with. I'm happy with my position. I'm happy with my exposure. Um, I'm happy with my price point that I entered. Of course, could it be lowered? Yeah, it can be lowered, but but yeah, it, it is what it is. And and my, my surname is Tay. Um, I don't my, my surname is not Powell, so 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 I don't print money at home and I don't own a bank. So so I guess that's that's how it is and that's how circumstances brought us to. So yeah. Um hey, smash the like button, guys. I just realized as well. Somebody said you didn't smash the like button. Um interesting. When are you collaborating with ML? I I believe ML is Master Leong. Um, I think Master Leong is my I saw Master Leong commented or, or was in the live chat earlier. Um, that's a great question. Um, I think I will extend the invitation to Master Leong as well to have a conversation. Uh, yeah, that's about it. So these are the type of questions that I find extremely tricky. You see, um, do I think whether is it a good time to enter Baba at 117? Um, I would say yes and no. Um, you, you have to understand, okay, I, I'm extremely uncomfortable giving quote-unquote stock picks on YouTube or on any social media platform like TikTok, Facebook, whatever platforms that you guys are using right now. It's bad because I don't know you. Um, I don't know your portfolio. I don't know how you're constructing your life, your circumstances, what's your cash, what's your cash flow, the amount of risk that you're willing to take and the risk return, um, the risk return or the risk reward ratio that you're looking at. So, so it's a very hard thing to ascertain. But of course, if you want to talk about, is it a good investment? Um, sure, because I'm, I, I'm, I'm heavily invested right now. So of course, my opinions will be biased. Uh, people who are invested in like Palantir, Tesla, C Limited, everybody's going to tell you most of their investments are, uh, are probably um, good and, and it's probably going to bring you to the moon. So it's it's quite quite ironic that you come over to a Tesla, eh, to a Alibaba bull and ask them whether it's Alibaba a good buy. I think you, you kind of already know the answer. So, so that's that's about that. But sure, please do, do your due diligence. Um, going on to YouTube and watching people talk about the stock, it's not due diligence. Please look at the business verticals. Please look at how they operate, um, what their business is like. And more importantly, look at all the different bad PCs um, surrounding the company, especially um, if you're talk touching China stocks. I think the Chinese government is an extremely huge wild card. Um, some people trust it. Some people um, don't trust it. Some are even more comfortable with Chinese government compared to the US. So... Um, that's a that's a personal decision that you have to be comfortable with CW. Yeah. Mm. Right, Linus. Uh, I don't think I deserve anything. Um, nobody should be entitled to anything in this world. Of course, I could have. I I I I didn't sell anything, so it's all unrealized loss now. So so in this case. Deserving or not, we'll see. Um, I think the only thing deserving, if you were to look at it um, from a price action point of view, I only care about the fundamentals of the business. Is Alibaba continuously operating? Is Lazada growing? Is Taobao growing? Is China Commerce growing? Is Cloud Computing growing? All these questions are what I'm comfortable with and, and what I'm focused with. I'm not interested in, in whether Alibaba is trading at $80 or $50. That's none of my business. But of course, I'm in the YouTube space. And everybody's interested in this price. And whenever the price starts going down, then people crave for more videos and are exp people explaining, hey, what actually happened? Um, um, that's that's how the entire system is being constructed. So I, I don't have a choice but to also play along with the price, but um, I really couldn't care less. So that's that's my point. So mm -hmm. Tiger stocks um, prepare for a price increase when Lazada, Cainiao, and Erlema are in green numbers or spin-off and not to mention N Group. I think that's a, that's a good catalyst to look forward to, I guess. Um, there, there are talks about um, people or, or there are talks from management team trying to spin off some of these verticals um, for them to own raise their own cash so that they won't they, they would kind of not um, taint. Or, or, or blemish the entire financial statements of, of Alibaba Group as a company. But that being said, I think there are still a few short-term challenges and headwinds um, in, in here thus far. So uh, I, I wouldn't look forward to N Group being going IPO at least this year. The, the, will they IPO eventually? Um, yeah, I, I would believe so. But um, for people that are constantly trying to speculate and buying into Alibaba Group because they want end to IPO and then Alibaba to jump and they, they can exit that position, I think that's not a very good decision because um, I would believe there are 
better companies and opportunities out there if you're trying to capitalize this sort of news and speculation. So yeah, that's about it. So hi, Lawrence. Um, thanks. Um, that's great. Value stocks taste in disbelief phase after capitulation. Uh, I actually, you, you guys know what? The, the funny thing was I was actually scripting a video on saying why we are near capitulation. I actually have like a short script that has written. I think I wrote around one paragraph worth of content already. And then Alibaba just relieved really. Maybe I'll just leave the, the, the script there first. And when Alibaba comes down again, whether it's a double, triple bottom, or even form new lows, I can just release that video just nice. But 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 that's an interesting um, experience that I had. Um, am I in disbelief phase? Um, I probably am not because um, I, I of course I didn't buy the dip, but I didn't paper hands as well. So my diamond hands are being activated because um, likewise, I said I'm a long-term investor. So if I do say that I'm a long-term investor, I'm not looking to swing trade off the, the, the company unless um, suddenly the share price just skyrockets and, and goes into overvalued territory. If not, um, yeah, the, the hands you're looking at here, um, it's, it's diamond hands. Anyway, that's an interesting question. What do you think of the genocides happening in China with Muslims? Until now, um, I tried to stay away with a lot of all these political um, discussions. Uh, from what I understand, um, I haven't really seen much evidence uh, with a lot of all these discussions about genocides and, and whatever. Of course, it's the headlines everywhere that, that, that you see. Um, uh, I think I'm just curious. Um, especially for um, George Peters, I would believe that you're not you're not in the Southeast Asia region, judging from the name. But of course, I don't judge. But yeah, um, in the Southeast Asia region, we have a lot of Muslim countries. So I I'm not too sure why, uh, when, when, why, why there are not more discussions in this region when, particularly if Muslims are, are the one being 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 um, so called going into concentration camps and stuff like that. But of course, this is out of my depth. I'm not going to talk about it anyway. So yeah, that's that's just my my my, my observation. Um, I'm not expressing any opinions on it. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say much about it. So next. Right. Um Lawrence, exact same sentiments. Markets actually do stay rational for longer than you think. And when when after a year of non-stop drop, a week of two of rise isn't too much to us. Sure. Um I think I'd be surprised if 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 Alibaba continue dropping and dropping for two years straight. So that that's not that's not a issue to me. Um, if they continue dropping in twenty twenty two until fifty forty dollars, it's I, I guess that's that's how it works. Okay, Ron. Um, when I say two twenty USD, what is it in nine nine eight eight? Um, if I'm not wrong, they actually do have a two dollar or three dollar price difference. So 220 in Hong Kong dollars is around 218. So 218 Hong Kong dollars and 220 US dollars. So that's about it. Yeah. Right. Um, thanks for validating me. I need I need the validation a lot. That's why I'm on YouTube. So if, if you guys want to validate me, please remember to smash the like button. So um to, to essentially help me boost my ego. So so that's about it. Financial forecaster um, took a gamble and bought 30 shares. Uh, happy that you, I, I would believe that you went down to the decimal place, $74.57. You're probably looking at some of the TAs and some of the price patterns and chart patterns. Happy that um, it turned out well for you. Um, if you have, yeah, I, I, I'm not too sure whether you took profits already or not, but um, I, I believe you, you, you know what you're doing. So you, you don't have to take advice from anyone. Hey, hi Mei Ling. Um, gotta admire your nerves. I stopped buying at 118. Hey, I, I think I was similar. Um, my last tranche that I bought that is a huge tranche was at 123. I think I posted it somewhere as well. So 123 Hong Kong dollars was my last tranche, like my biggest tranche. And then subsequently I only bought a few shares here and there. I, I don't have too much money as well. Like I said, I, I don't print money. And, and my parents don't print money as well. So, so that's an issue. So yeah. Next, interesting question from Des. If I can hold one US company for the next 10 years, what would it be? Um, for the next 10 years, it's 
it's, it's a long time frame and there's a lot of uncertainty. But um, I really liked how Jeff Bezos actually talked about Google. I think he said that, I forgot what was it Jeff Bezos, but it was one of the tech um, um, CEOs, executives right, um, a few years back. They said that Google was a mountain or, or Google is a mountain. It can be overcome, but it cannot be moved. So if I were to really look just whole one US company um, without looking at it for 10 years, I would probably buy Alphabet. Um, this rugged, disregarding the fact that about the valuation of the company and stuff, just purely from a fundamental point of view and, and, and the strength of the business and the enterprise, I'll probably hold Alphabet or Google in this case. So yeah. Ivan Lau, why you never maintain one meter safe? Hey, it is. It's one meter. I'm more than one meters away. Look, I can't touch the I can't touch the bear. So maybe it's like some 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 uh, 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 parallax error. I'm actually quite far away from the wall. So so in case in case you're wondering. Right. Now, trimming Baba would be trimming China, wait until China economy supersedes um, US before trimming. Um I would agree and disagree. I think in this case, um, um Alibaba in this case, I think if you want to make the argument that investing into Alibaba or buying into the stock itself is a bet on China, I think I can give it 50-50 because comparing with, let's say, the other tech conglomerates like Tencent, Tencent has a global portfolio. They have investments in like C-Limited, in, in Tesla. So all these are global exposures. But I think for China, 70-odd percent is actually from, actually no, um, 70 odd percent is from China commerce alone. So the international commerce arm works out around 7 to 8 percent. And the rest is like um, their cloud computing arm and their um, um, local consumer services. If you add everything up, I think more than 80 odd percent is in China. So um, the exposure to China is definitely huge. And, and, and um, um, that's why uh, people that want to look into like, especially e-commerce and especially like cloud computing, um, when, when the economy is not doing that great, I don't think small medium enterprises are bothered or, or easy to, to, to it, it's not an easy climate to do business in. So I do hope that uh, uh, the, the Chinese leaders or whoever that's in power have the wisdom and have the capabilities to bring us and steer us out of all these different um, issues and, and, and short-term headwinds. Right. Um, right. Um, I actually do have the same sentiments and uh, there was this tweet I've forgotten from which user. Sorry, guys. Um, I, I, I've been reading from quite a lot of sources and I usually forget where I read things from, but you can probably fact check me because Google is our best friend today. Um, I do understand that a lot of us have a price range or a uh, uh, price range. What am I talking about? We all do have a, a cost price of around 120 to 180. I think most people that actually follow the, the, the channel has a, cost, uh, has a cost price range of this. And when Alibaba actually do recovers back into this range, maybe in the middle middle term, like maybe in 150 to the 150 price point, there might be a lot of selling pressure because people start breaking even. Or if people actually take a 10, 20% increase and then they just exceed their position because um, they might have regretted their decision or they don't want Chinese exposure anymore. So I do feel like if Alibaba to recover back to the 150 to 180, people are probably going to cut their losses or break even or just run with a 10% profit. So that's when you need institutions coming in and to really vote vote um, um, with their dollar bills and, and, and have confidence in all these different Chinese companies again. So that's just my thoughts about it. Interesting, George, uh, uh, George, if, if I don't, I have a lot of stocks at 274. Don't see the stock in 10 years and you'll be surprised by this company and this country. Likewise, um, the opposite can also be true. Even though the economic miracle of China has been playing out for the last 30 to 40 years, um, I, think, I think there is no guarantee or there is no insurance saying that China will continue on in this trajectory. I think that's something that uh, um, investors have to be comfortable with. Likewise for S&P 500, I think I did voice this concern before. Um, the S&P 500 did return an 8 to 10% annual, annualized return for the last God knows how long, 50, 100 years. But nobody is to guarantee you that they're going to continue replicating their performance for the next 20, 50 years. And especially for younger folks like me and you, of course, are people that are watching. I know that a lot of you are in the, the, the age range of around 25, 24 to 34, if I'm not wrong. Um, this, this range makes up around a good 50-60% of my viewers. 
Um, sure, dollar cost averaging into an ETF, like the S&P 500, is a trial and tested way, but doesn't mean that it will definitely return you X amount of returns. They will return you market returns, sure, um, but nobody is to say that um, the US market will be the dominant market moving forward and there will be no other alternatives. I think nobody is here to give you that guarantee. So likewise, um, for the Chinese economy, nobody is giving you that guarantee as well. So don't be too hopeful. Um, I think you have to be you, you can be you can remain optimistic, but you have to be skeptical about that point of view as well. And there is no guarantee in this world. Um, there's only two things that's guaranteed: taxes and death. So that's about it. If you can choose the interview, Xi Jinping or Daniel Chang, who will you choose? I would choose, I would choose Daniel. Um, even though talking to Chairman Xi would probably be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, um, I would like to do both if I can be greedy. And yes, I will do both. I would choose not to answer your question. Um, Facebook is not going to 100 unless there's a recession, financial crisis 2.0, and stock market collapse. Who knows? A black swan event can always pop up again. Nobody knows. So I'm, I'm, I must be ready when Facebook goes to $100. And, and that's my perspective. And if you think about it, Facebook at 200 plus right now, they're at a 500 plus billion dollar market cap. Um, if it's at $100, it's probably trading at around Alibaba's market cap. So it's it's how you look at it. Sally Chua, how about Didi? I think Didi is the, the, the example of a short squeeze, not really Alibaba. Didi's recovery was incredible. I, I'm not too sure what, I, I haven't really been following that stock, but I know that they're going to delist in the US and then they're going to delist. They want to list in Hong Kong and then they got cancelled. So I'm, I'm not too sure what, what Didi investors or shareholders are doing right now. But yeah, that's... <laughs> I'm, I'm just surprised and, and, and um, I'm, I'm speechless with what's happening with DD right now. Mm, Jerome, owning Chinese stocks train my holding power and patience, especially when I'm a relatively new investor. Good training. That's a good point of view. I do agree. And, and yeah, it's, it, it really takes a lot of temperament and stomach to look at it for, for, especially for people that have been on this journey with me thus far. I think I've been covering Alibaba since $230. My video, I think my first video, if you look at the oldest video, it's um, when Charlie Munger first bought his first tranche. And that was when Alibaba was around 220 to 230. And it's been an incredible ride thus far. And incredible is an understatement. Right. Um, what do I think about Hello Group? Haven't really looked into it, but I can put it in my list. Um, my, my, my list is overflowing right now. It's, it's quite hard to follow with a lot of companies, but that's how it is. So CSRC is asking US listed firms to comply with the SEC. Yeah, I, I saw it. Um, it's at the first part of the video if you want to talk about it. And if you want to know my opinion about that, that part. Um, interesting. How old are you? Um, if you want to, please please go ahead and guess my age. But um, um, there, there are no prices if you've got it right. So yeah. Oh, yes. I answer your question. And even though you didn't get an answer, but I, I kind of answered your question. So remember to smash the freaking like button. So, um, hey, stop playing with me. Don't 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 press it twice. Press once will do. So so that's that's fun. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not in politics. So, so, so diplomatic answer or not, it's how I fundamentally feel. I think, I think when I come off as more genuine and more sincere in my answer, um, it's really how I feel and how I look at the entire situation thus far. Um, I'm not here to pander to, to, to being the right answer or having the politically correct answer. I'm just expressing what I view and, and what I think. So let's, let's go. Please refrain from profanities. I'm not too sure why YouTube doesn't ban this, but uh, yes, um, please refrain from profanities. Mm, TYX, um, you're extremely passionate. I can see it, but um, don't have to use caps for everything. Um, fun stuff. If you get it, you get it. I'm just going to put it there for, for, for a while. Hey, same sentiments, Marco. I think 
we, we, we are in an extended downtrend and an extended bear market for Chinese equities. Uh, so, sometimes you, you are always in this, in this dilemma, right? Whether you start averaging down, if you average down too quickly, um, you might run out of funds. If you average down too slowly, um, you might miss the bottom. But uh, that's why the best is to leave emotions out of this entire equation. So you can either do it on a timely basis, which means every month, or you can do it on a price basis. So um, like every $20 or something. I, I don't know. It's up to you to decide, but it's entirely up to your own circumstances. So yeah, that's about it. Mm. Next up, let me scroll through some of the discussion. It's 11.56. I've been on for around one hour, nearing one hour. So I'm probably going to go off soon, but I will try my best to answer questions as much as possible before I go off. Matthew, how do I convert BABA to 998? You have to, you have to ask your... You have to ask your broker. Um, I think different brokers have different ways of converting. Um, the funny thing is, I think the conversion charges for some of the brokerage firms are quite high. So it might actually be make more, make, make more economic. It actually might make more economical sense to just sell your BBA shares and just buy 998 in the event that it really did this. If not, um, if you're happy with your current position, then then just just carry on. I have no clue. I have did price predictions before and it turned out bad. So I'm probably not gonna be so ignorant to make a price prediction again. But of course, I know a lot of you love this kind of price prediction. I think end of year, there are a few headwinds. Um, elections are, are one. Um, number two, the Chinese economy might be slowing a little bit down. And um, um, I, I, would, I would presume that EPS or at least earnings per share for Alibaba would, would turn for the better, um, at least in the coming financial year, because um, they are exercising some sort of discipline. And... Uh, I, I would presume that they are actively trying to do something with the cash power that they have on their balance sheet. So I'm still waiting for them to buy back shares to push the EPS and, and look at how the market brings us um, at the end of the day. Is selling Baba like giving a child away? I would not. I, I, would, I, I would fundamentally disagree with this. I think um, there is a fine line between having conviction and falling in love with the stock. So like I said, there has to be a few check marks and a few thresholds that has to be hit in order for me to sell out my Alibaba share. Um, I think one of the main issues is when fundamentals really erode um, for the worse and Alibaba, maybe they lose market share and um, now JD overtakes them and then their cloud computing has no growth and Lazada or international commerce um, starts going negative growth. I think those are all red flags that any investor should be keeping, a, keeping an eye and keeping a lookout for. Um, if not, uh, I don't think it's like giving a child away because I don't, I, I, I would presume that I'm objective enough to not fall in love with the stock. Um, that's what I personally hope of, of course. Um, but likewise, I, 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 I do hope that I, I have the capabilities to, to discern and to know when it's an overvalued price to, to exit the position or if I feel like um, the valuation has gotten a little bit out of hand. So that's, that's my own understanding. Mm. So I sold off all of my recent high flyers like Block, Coinbase, and Alibaba. Hope we get another one leg down. Um, I'm not too sure whether you can call Alibaba a high flyer. I think it's still significantly down, but but um, you're essentially trying to time the market. If you know what you're doing, I'm happy for you. And I would presume that you have earned quite a bit of money as well. So continue doing whatever you're happy with. I'm rooting for you, Peter. If you're so confident on Alibaba, did you buy the dip? Um, I, I didn't. I, I think I, I listed out my, 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 my train of thought and my thought process and what I was thinking in my previous video and why I stopped buying. Uh, we don't print money and I think exposure is getting a little bit big. Even though I, I'm confident or I, I still have conviction in Alibaba, I have conviction in holding on, but um, to continue buying in and even some, some might ask me, hey, why didn't you go on margin? Um, I'm actually a huge advocate of not using margins. Uh, that's, that's my own personal baseline that I would like to work with. Um, I'm not against people using margin, but um, that's, that's how it is. Um, 
right when cloud turns corner easy money i think that there there are definitely some 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 sort of discussions on why are they not growing as as much as um, the us counterparts i think i did outline some of the discussions previously uh, but yeah, I, I would presume that the Southeast Asia mar market or even the ASEAN market is not small. So I think people should not belittle saying that, oh, because US companies are not using Chinese um, solutions, so they, they, they cannot grow and, and they're inferior. And um, um, it, it feels like the Eastern part of the world is always inferior, right? I, I, I hold a different opinion. Of course, I'm biased because I'm from the um, Eastern part of the world. But yeah, that's that's how it is. Right. Um, LWT trading and investing. I actually do watch, I watched his Alibaba video before. So just a shout out. If you, you haven't already, um, you can go ahead and click his profile. We need a pool that's not like capitalism. Sure. Capitalism was what brought China where it is today. So I will have a different thought and opinion on that. Next. Buying Evergrande on the dip, that's that's a very ballsy move. Um, you need a lot of courage. And I think on top of diamond hands, you need diamond balls. So um, please do your own due diligence. Evergrande is a hot mess and it's a tricky situation. Will there be a bailout or not? I'm not too sure. This thing has been playing out for at least a good, I don't know, six months to a year. Um, that isn't really a very fair conclusion right now. And they're still in a limbo with the government and with all the different stakeholders so you just um, buy it on your own at your own risk so right yeah he was appointed toby was appointed as the deputy he was taking over maggie soon so yeah that's about it mm. yeah facebook is definitely going to 200 it was flirting at 200 for quite some time especially when the market was showing weakness it was at 180 something at the lowest. So yeah, we will wait for it. Baba reaching 1000 by Q1 of 2027. That's a little bit more optimistic, a very optimistic projection. $1,000 price target means that um, it has to 10x from here. And 10x from here would probably mean around a two to a $3 trillion market cap, 2.8 to $3 trillion. Um, I wouldn't say that it's an easy feat, especially when it's a Chinese company. But who knows? If tides turn and if China's sentiments around China is turn for the better, why not? Who 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 know? Um, ben, you you're, you're incredible. If you don't know, um, please read up a little bit more and start googling. I think you you would know where Jack Ma is. And for you to make a comment like that. Um, it's quite, how would I put it? It's a little bit disrespectful, but sure, you have your own, you have your own point of view. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna talk anything about it, but yeah, sure. Have fun with, with whatever you're saying. Mm, oh dear, I lost my Nineteen. Thank you for for. Uh, I'm honored to be nineteen, but um, I'm not that young, so that's that's incredible. Yes, I do have a lot of thoughts on that. I think I actually did talk about the Southeast Asia expansion and how um the international arm would be one of the main drivers. Uh, one of the two main drivers: cloud computing and international arm. Um, if for those of you who have been following commerce or e-commerce as an industry. C Limited has posed tremendous amount of results and they've been, the execution was flawless. Um, they were doing a lot of good work in the Southeast Asia region. I think Lazada was was taking a back, was was, was on the back seat and taking a back burner. Um, there are a lot of potential right here, right now. Um, but I think in terms of monetization and in terms of increasing and bumping up um, um, users and, and the, the, the average spending on the app, I think there is still a lot of room to grow. Of course, um, having potential is one thing. Um, number two, people like to see the here and now. So in terms of how they're going to execute now and how they're going to drive revenue and, and drive profits from all these people, I think it remains a huge question mark. And, and um, um, 
I think right now the strategy moving forward, at least for the Southeast Asia region, is they're putting more emphasis, but they're not going all in. Um, from what I understand and from, from what I look at the company's um, um, expansion plans, um, they're, not, they're not saying that, oh, yes, um, this is the second China. We are going to go in and have 1 billion users again. I don't think that's the, that's the plan thus far. Um, I'm sorry, not 1 billion. I think Southeast Asia has around 600 million population, give or take. They're not saying, okay, I'm here to conquer at least 400 million people. I don't think that's the plan, but um, sure, they are putting more emphasis in this region. Mm. What am I studying in university right now? I'm doing a double degree. I'm doing uh, one in accounting and one in um, finance. So if that helps, I'm sure I'm not. I'm not appealing to authority, by the way. Please don't. Please don't go into, go into those fallacies. Mm. Mm, yeah. I'm in the age range if if you if if you're wondering. Okay, I think I don't I don't want to continue with this. Uh, I, I don't need to keep it. I, I think it's public information. I'm I'm 24, so that Demson got it right. I'm in the upper range. This is an extremely tricky question. Where do I see the future of US China relationship? Um I'm in a pretty interesting position right now. So I actually do, I, I think I do have a good grasp of both English and Chinese. I think for English, you guys can be a testament to it, whether I do have a relatively um, decent command of the language. I think I do have a decent command of Chinese as well. I wouldn't compare myself or pit myself against um, the native Chinese, but I do understand, I read from time to time, and I, I, I watch some of the interviews that C gives and some of his speeches, addresses, and I can kind of understand what he's talking about. So I would fundamentally believe that I'm not that bad in Chinese. But um, this entire US-China relationship um, would be extremely tricky and challenging. I think um, like, likewise in the earlier part of the video, I talked about uh, the, 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 the rising in power and how Ray Dalio has, has effectively put it. When one person, one, when one empire is at its peak, um, when it's in its decline, um, it's going to do its best um, to try to prevent from this peaceful transfer of power, if, if you get what I mean. It's going to be challenging. And I think thus far, at least in the medium term, at least for at least the next five to 10 years, China has been openly saying that they are not in the position and they are not interested in being the global power. And they've constantly been saying that they're only interested in their local, local economy, local people. They want to do better for the people and stuff like that. So they're not interested in trying to vie for world position, trying to replace um, the petrol running B or the petrol yuan, um, the, the petroleum industry can continue being denominated in the US dollar. I think they're not interested um, thus far to be poking their nose in all the global affairs and trying to maintain the world order. Um, that's at least my take, at least um, in the decade. So in 2030, um, they're not interested and they've been publicly making the position. It's just that, of course, um, you saying one thing and you doing something else, um, that, that would have that disconnect. And I would put it bluntly, um, saying that China not wanting to be a superpower or not wanting to be the world leader, it's a, probably a lie. It's probably something that they want to appease to the rest of the world because they know that if out, right out of the gate, they're going to come out and say that, hey, um, we are going to take on the United States. Um, that's not going to end well. So it's a political maneuver, if, if I can put it. So that's, that's just my quick two cents on it. Hey. Getting a better camera. This is a decent camera, I guess. I spent quite some some money for it, but yeah, that, that's quite sad. Maybe a stranger question. Just need an opinion outside of my own head bubble. Planning on buying a house with my GF this year. Um, cash out now or hold a couple more months for the hopium or greed. This is a tricky question. Um, I'm not. I, I'm not. I, I can't give you advice, but but. Uh, I think generally speaking, a good rule of thumb, don't invest money that you need um, for buying a house, putting on a down payment for a renovation and stuff like that. I think that's not a good, 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 good thing to do or a good rule of thumb because um, your decisions will be undergirded by all these artificial deadlines or um, artificial dangers that you might see because you need the money in the short term. So that's not a good, that's not a good thing to do. So, so yeah, please, please, please don't. Um, right, it's getting a little bit late. I'm going to scroll through a little. 
um, when is the elections? Soon. I think it's in August for China. Um, the 2022 elections for the US is in November. So um, it's a prime time for people to take a jab at each other. So that's that's something that I'm, I'm, I'm worried about. <laughs> okay. Yeah, please don't spam the... Please don't spend the chat section, please, Clutch. But okay, happy for you. Uh, I think they do. I think, I think, I think, I think Tencent, whether is it on Mies or not, um, they will probably report um, one of the slowest, slowest growth in terms of earnings and revenues. Um, whether they will rally or not, or whether how it will impact Alibaba. I think um, if you look at it from an adjacent perspective, like if you look at it on the landscape specifically, I think Pintoto and JD will have a more significant and more serious impact on Alibaba. Sure, Tencent will probably have because it's one of the large tech conglomerates and it kind of sets the pace and the tone um, for tech conglomerates in, in 2022. But um, we'll see. I think the markets will, will do its thing again and they will start voting with the dollar bills. Yeah, you pull words out of my mouth for us. So it's it's... You you do what you, you do what you're comfortable with, my friend. Um, that's a very industry specific question. I, I do understand that there is a, a shortage in terms of commodities in, in the, the, the the Ukraine situation. And uh my heart goes out to everyone that's there. I think I, I've been looking at some of the some of the videos, some of the riots and some of the invasion and stuff. It's it's crazy. It's it's War is stupid, if, if I can put it. it. My baseline is going out there and killing another human being just because of some territorial uh, disputes and conflicts. It's uh, I don't think it's 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 justified. Sure, then you ask me, oh, what happened to China and Taiwan? What happens if they invade? Um, sure, I, I think it will be quite dumb if, if they're going to send Chinese soldiers to kill Chinese people. And, and being part of the Chinese race, I'll, I'll be extremely sad on that day if China really chose to invade Taiwan. But um, I, I would definitely still chant peaceful um, um, discussions, peace talks, how we can look at our different differences and, and try to square away some of the problems. And, and that's, that's what I hope that the world can come, come to consensus with. Um, that being said, I think bombings in some of the Muslim countries and even in Saudi Arabia, in that Saudi region, I'm also condemning those kind of actions. It's just stupid to just bomb people just because you have the ability and just because you're stronger. That's that's dumb. So so that's just my position. Um, yeah, I did. It's the first part of the video. So if you want to look, you want to look at it. Um, please go back and and look at that video. Mm, no, I'm not. I, I'm not too sure where 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 JC is is is, is, is who JC is talking about. But oh. I think he's talking about, I think he's talking about Jack Ma, but, but that was a very, very old, old, old message, but okay. Mm. Right, um, I'll be making a video soon, so please do stay tuned. I think I wanted to make a JD comparison for Alibaba, then Pintoto also released the results, and they grew 3%. Year on year, um, I, I don't know what kind of growth company is that, but yeah, um, I'm going to make a, a compilation of everyone. So I'm going to compare JD and Pintoto with Alibaba as well and to gain some insights about um, the e-commerce industry by and large. Um, hi, Easy. I think that can be Googleable. Um, right now, I think the GDP per capita is still at one six of, of US. So I think US is at 60K, China's at 10K, give or take. Um, that there is still a lot of room to catch up. And, and technically speaking, I think um, the economy is slowing down for good reasons. Um, it feels like, uh, uh, if I can put the analogy across, it feels like um, we're on a train, on a high-speed train, and when the train is, when, when the tracks, or, or when you're on a sharp turn, it's good to slow down. And why is there a sharp turn? Um, there are a lot of reasons. Geopolitical tension is one. Um, managing um, conflicts is another. I think people also tend to underestimate and say that, oh, even though China is a very well-controlled um, economy and a well-controlled state, um, there are problems in, internally, corruption problems, people evading taxes, um, uh, people getting uh, being, being disregarded. Um, 
uneven distribution in terms of wealth. Um, there's a huge disparity. People in tech are earning a huge ton of money, while farmers, on the other hand, are earning like uh, probably not even livable wages. So um, there are a lot of issues. So at, even though we like to think that growth is a good thing um, by the aggregate, it's true that growth is a good thing, but there are a lot of things that is sacrificed for growth. Um, likewise, for companies, it's the same for countries as well. So I think for China, they have to try to tidy up some of the issues um, internally before moving forward and, and, and go ahead with the trajectory again. So that's 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 a, a, a food for thought for people that keep saying that, oh, China has lost its way and, and they, 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 they are hoping for a growth rate of 10% again. I think that's probably not going to come. Um, whether they're, they're going to dip down to maybe 3-4% and then go back up to 5%, I think that's something that we can look forward to. But um, it's true that they have some housekeeping matters that they have to look into before um, 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 firing on all cylinders again. So what do I think about Tencent? I think it's a great company. Um, I think for those of you who want a Tencent, a short Tencent write-up, shout out to Frank. I think Frank Investing or something. I, I follow him on Twitter as well. So he, he posted a very interesting article. I think it was quite... Uh, it, it's different from the normal Tencent deep dives that I see on Seeking Alpha or whatever. So I think it's, it's worth a read. I do have Tencent exposure um, via KWeb, even though it's not, it's not um, um, too, too big of a deal um, in terms of KWeb's allocation in my portfolio, but, but that's where it is today. So... Interesting. I I can I cannot tell too. So so I'm still a bull, of course. I'm, I'm I hold all my positions and and all the the different headlines and all the different um discussions that 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 we have on YouTube. Um, do remember that we are trying to vie for attention, but um I think action speaks louder than words in terms of how you manage your portfolio. So that's how it works. Yes, I do actually. Um, actually, I do have a few people in my Discord group. The Scott server that are China Chinese, and I have quite a few China Chinese friends in Singapore. Um, in case you don't know, um, there are a lot of like scholars, um, a lot of people that work here um, from China, and and they they uh, open the app. You can see two apps. If you open, sorry, you open their phone, you can see two apps um, without fail. Number one, you'll see uh, you'll see um, WeChat, and number two, um, you'll see um, Taobao or you'll see and uh, Alipay, whatever. That, that's the two apps that you'll see. So I think I'll let I'll let the actions um, speak louder than than whatever I have to claim or whoever that's on the internet, um, going on and on about how um, um, Alibaba and Tencent is a dead company. So that's that's I'll leave it at, at there. Mm. Hey, that's an interesting question. Um, I've been following them quite a bit. I think you see th this is a very tricky question, right? Uh, Saying that China has a very stable political climate, that's far from the truth. Um, there are a lot of internal battling in, in, in the, the party. And specifically when Xi says that he wants to be chairman for life and he wants to abolish the two-term limit, um, I think it puts a lot of bounty on his head and it's a very scary situation to be in. I, I admire and I applaud his courage for doing something like that. But is this the best way forward or to chart the way forward for China? I'm, I'm not too sure. I think there are definitely merits to why um, there is this two-term limit, even for the United States. Um, there, there has to be good succession planning. And for C to be in that position, um, he might get complacent. I'm not too sure. He might um, start, um, um, I don't start delaying his succession planning, which is a bad thing, by the way, for the country in the long term. Um, likewise, I think for Daily Journal as well. I think Charlie Munger has been on the, the, the position and his, his right-hand man has been on the position as well. And he's saying that he's looking for succession planning and a successor, but um, I'm not, I, I touch wood, I hope nothing happens or no major tectonic shifts in the entire climate, but um, um, no, I, 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 I think that he will be elected again. Um, that being said, it will be a, a very interesting dynamics moving forward, if, if I can put it that way. That's interesting. I, I hope that you're right. And, and I'm, I'm skeptical all the way, by the way. I, when, when it's dropping, I was thinking that it will probably drop further. And, and when it went up, you also probably have to think that whether is this really sustainable or not. Yeah. Hasun, you're awesome too. Remember to smash the like button as well, you, 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 you people. Uh, Ron, not really. 
I don't think so. Um, I don't think they're going to invade because it irks me and it makes me sad if Chinese is going to invade Chinese. It's like killing your own race, which doesn't make sense. And a lot of innocent people are, are going to be in this conflict that's, that, that's going to be transpired in real time. And I, I hope nothing like that happens. Um, if something were to happen, they can absorb their differences in confrontation in terms of um, co in, in, in discussions, but not going to war. I think that's, that's bad. I don't know. Um, I'm not sure whether they'll go down or not, but um, there are, I mean, based on expectations, um, Tencent has quite low expectations thus far uh, moving forward, so I, I really don't know. Hey, thanks. I think we are probably gonna, we are probably gonna come to an end soon. I think it's a, it has been a great discussion. Um, Socialism with Chinese characteristics, capitalism with Chinese characteristics as well. Whatever, chi cap whatever um, Chinese characteristics they mean, I'm not too sure. I think it's really up to the definition, which is why they don't really call themselves like um, communist communists, even though it's in the name. Um, they like to come out with their, 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 their entire papers and, and chart the way forward for China. Um, they like to call it with the name of the leader. So they call it Xi Jinping's thought. So, so how they how they really quantify it? It's really a mixture, mixture of capitalism, socialism, um, I don't know, communism, whatever you like to call it. It's the same. I think if you actually do study um, other countries other than the U.S., Singapore is a classic example of non non communist, non socialist, non non. I, I don't know. I don't know what you call us. We we are a breed of our own, and we managed to create new new beginnings, and we probably have one of the highest GDP per capita. So the system is probably working, but what would you specifically quantify this system? I'm not too sure. We are a blend of everything. So if you want to know more, please go ahead and research about Singapore as well. Mm, yeah, I think that's about it. Um, probably not going to continue on. On, yeah. Yes, I'm not going to continue on. Okay, thanks everyone for joining on with this 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 entire live stream. It's been great. I wanted to really kind of address the two main issues about the share buyback and um, the regulators asking them to comply. Um, likewise, I, I I I if I can put a conclusion to this entire thing, why do I say that? Let's not celebrate too early. Um, share buybacks wise, it's an increase in ten billion dollars. It's not a total increase in twenty five billion. They have already bought back seven point five billion. So um, they have already bought back 7.5 billion. So totally now um, outstanding share repurchase program is around 17.5 billion. But based on this news, um, Alibaba shot up like, I don't know, 30 odd billion, which is quite interesting. Um, it's an interesting phenomenon. And on point number two about regulators um, talking about um, complying with the SEC audits and whatever, I did say the ball is in the courts of the SEC and the courts of the US regulators. It's not really up to the Chinese regulators to decide. So um, I do predict, or I actually do speculate that there are still some short-term headwinds to come. Um, don't think that everything is fine and dandy. And I would also presume that the Chinese regulators will not fully comply. I think the keyword here is fully comply. Um, I'm not expecting that the Chinese regulators to fully comply to all the different SEC audits or whatever that they have. So um, um, it's really still up for negotiation and how things are going to be talked through between the two regulators. So with that, I'll see you in the next video, but more importantly, I will see you on the moon. Goodbye, people. Have a great night or have a great morning wherever you are. Goodbye.